close another week with another story from James Thurber. There are fans of his Walter Mitty story. I love a box to hide in. The stories in my life and hard times have their adherents. But tonight we begin what might be the best of them all. And keep in the back of your mind that while Thurber set this story in the business world of New York City of the early 1940s, when it was made into a film in 1959, they moved it to a Scottish distillery. The Battle of the Sexes starred Peter Sellers and Robert Morley and Donald Pleasance. In its original form, it appeared first in the Thurber Carnival in 1945, and I'm reading, as usual, from the Library of America, Thurber Writings and Drawings, edited by Garrison Keeler. Hold on to your hat, the catbird seat, by James Thurber. Mr. Martin bought the pack of camels on Monday night in the most crowded cigar store on Broadway. It was theater time, and seven or eight men were buying cigarettes. The clerk didn't even glance at Mr. Martin, who put the pack in his overcoat pocket and went out. If any of the staff at FNS had seen him buy the cigarettes, they would have been astonished, for it was generally known that Mr. Martin did not smoke and never had. No one saw him. It was just a week to the day since Mr. Martin had decided to rub out Mrs. Old Jean Barrows. The term rub out pleased him because it suggested nothing more than the correction of an error, in this case an error of Mr. Fitweiler. Mr. Martin had spent each night of the past week working out his plan and examining it. As he walked home now, he went over it again. For the hundredth time, he resented the element of imprecision, the margin of guesswork that entered into the business. The project, as he had worked it out, was casual and bold. The risks were considerable. Something might go wrong anywhere along the line, and therein lay the cunning of his scheme. No one would ever see in it the cautious, painstaking hand of Irwin Martin, head of the filing department at FNS, of whom Mr. Fitweiler had once said, man is fallible, but Martin isn't. No one would see his hand, that is, unless it were caught in the act. Sitting in his apartment, drinking a glass of milk, Mr. Martin reviewed his case against Mrs. Old Jean Barrows, as he had every night for seven nights. He began at the beginning, her quacking voice and braying laugh had first profaned the halls of FNS on March 7, 1941. Mr. Martin had a head for dates. Old Roberts, the personnel chief, had introduced her as the newly appointed special advisor to the president of the firm, Mr. Fitweiler. The woman had appalled Mr. Martin instantly, but he hadn't shown it. He had given her his dry hand, a look of studious concentration, and a faint smile. Well. She said, looking at the papers on his desk. Are you lifting the ox cart out of the ditch? As Mr. Martin recalled that moment over his milk, he squirmed slightly. He must keep his mind on her crimes as a special advisor, not on her peccadilloes as a personality. This he found difficult to do, in spite of entering an objection and sustaining it. The faults of the woman as a woman kept chattering on in his mind like an unruly witness. She had, for almost two years now, baited him in the halls, in the elevator, even in his own office, into which she romped now and then like a circus horse. She was constantly shouting these silly questions at him. Are you lifting the ox cart out of the ditch? Are you tearing up the pea patch? Are you hollering down the rain barrel? Are you scraping around the bottom of the pickle barrel? Are you sitting in the cat bird seat? It was Joey Hart, one of Mr. Martin's two assistants, who had explained what the gibberish meant. She must be a Dodger fan, he had said. Red Barber announces the Dodger games over the radio. He uses those expressions, pick them up down south. Joey had gone on to explain one or two. Tearing up the pea patch meant going on a rampage. Sitting in the catbird seat meant sitting pretty like a batter with three balls and no strikes on him. Mr. Martin dismissed all this with an effort. It had been annoying. It had driven him near to distraction, but he was too solid a man to be moved to murder by anything so childish. It was fortunate, he reflected, as he passed on to the important charges against Mrs. Barrows, that he had stood up under it so well. He had maintained always an outward appearance of polite tolerance. Why, I even believe you like the woman, Miss Paired, his other assistant, had once said to him. He had simply smiled. A gavel wrapped in Mr. Martin's mind, and the case proper was resumed. Mrs. Old Jean Barrows stood charged with willful, blatant, and persistent attempts to destroy the efficiency and system of FNS. It was competent, material, and relevant to review her advent and rise to power. Mr. Martin had got the story from Ms. Paired, who seemed always able to find things out. According to her, 
Mr. Barrow, Mrs. Barrows had met Mr. Fitweiler at a party where she had rescued him from the embraces of a powerfully built drunken man who had mistaken the president of FNS for a famous retired Middle Western football coach. She had led him to a sofa and somehow worked upon him a monstrous magic. The aging gentleman had jumped to the conclusion there and then that this was a woman of singular attainments, equipped to bring out the best in him and in the firm. A week later, he had introduced her into FNS as his special advisor. On that day, confusion got its foot in the door. Part one of The Catbird Seat by James Thurber, to be continued. That's October 15th. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.